everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be working um, specifically for a client who had uh, knee replacement surgery, uh, I think around six, seven months ago, uh, continuing to have some pain more in the back of the knee and kind of the popliteal space. Uh, I find that area of the knee to kind of be a, a good area that gets real congested. Um, got calf group, hamstrings, popliteal muscle, all kind of converging and crossing through that back of the knee. Plus when we get swelling in the knee, because the knee is a um, hard structure all through the front, that swelling, the only space that we have that's soft that has room for that swelling to go is the back of the knee, which then kind of impacts all those, mu that musculature, vasculature, neur neurology in the back of the knee, creates that space, puts pressure on things and can kind of create, wreak havoc. Um, so we're gonna kind of look at how we can relieve some of that pressure associated with swelling of the inflammation, swelling of the knee, as well as the mechanical neurological issues that go down into the foot. So we're gonna be focusing largely on foot, calves uh, with some self-massage using a ball and a foam roller, um, and then going through foot mobility hip mobility, um, spine mobility, trying to get that flow to move better through the back of the knee and hopefully get a little bit of relief from the pain. So let's get started. So we're gonna start on our back and I wanna start with kind of a simple assessment of baby rolls because I, I kind of wanna look at how, what's going on at the foot and the knee is associated with the rest of the spine, especially mechanics of the spine related to gait and baby rolls is one of the simplest ways of doing that. So laying on back, since this is the first time we're moving and we, we do have knee pain, we also have some hip pain issues related to this uh, issue. I wanna make sure that we are going incredibly slow, cautious, exploring movement to start with. I don't wanna over move uh, just in case there's pain in the low back or that we trigger something in the knee. So before we do any movement, I wanna kinda of cue in breath, breathing in through the nose, Nice deep breath, filling up that abdominal space. Exhale through the mouth, drawing the navel all the way into the spine. Let's get a good like three to five, nice deep soothing breaths. Full in and full out. And as we're breathing into that abdominal space, we can kind of imagine, I don't want to just breathe up forward into the belly. I also want to breathe out into the side body of the low back as well as into the low back so kind of imagining that your uh, abdominal space is a balloon and we want to expand in 360 degrees of that balloon all directions and as we're sinking into that breath we can bring our arms up into more of a y and checking in making sure this isn't painful on shoulders and on the next inhale, as you exhale, we're going to reach with the hand across the body, nice and slowly going short. I'm not going far as we exhale fully. Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale, reaching across to the other side. We'll do five to 10 on each side. With each one, we're seeing if we can reach a little feet further with the fingertips. And then, can you reach a little further through the opposing toe tips? Can you start to draw that length from fingertip to toe tip out? And as you're doing this, notice whether you're pushing through your feet or can you keep your lower body relaxed and soft in gravity? And do you notice a difference in how this stretches from the left side to the right side? Is one side stiffer, tighter, achier? Are you not able to go as far? Is one side painful compared to the other side? All 
I'm feeling a little more restricted as I reach across with my right side and I feel that more through kind of my right side, uh, low back, side body, low back. Next, we're gonna reach through the feet. Now again, I wanna stay short, small. I'm not going big on this movement. As I lift my leg up, I kind of want to keep it elevated and high. I don't want it to drop down towards the floor because that can create some pinch on the hip or the low back. I'm kind of reaching up as if I want to touch something up on a shelf. Again, starting small. Inhale to center, exhale as we reach. And with each one, we're seeing if we can slowly reach a little further. The shoulder blade is allowed to lift up off the floor. Your elbow is allowed to lift. But I want to try to keep some contact with the back of the hand, wrist, palm, fingers. But they're allowed to slide and lift as you reach. And on that exhale, we're seeing how far can we start to reach the toes away without getting any pain in the back, hips, or shoulders. And if we're able to start drawing that out, then we can counter reach through our fingertips to see how long from toe tip to fingertip we can get and start to notice how does that feel on the right side compared to the left side. One side tighter, stiffer, achier, is one side a little painful. Keep in mind that I wanna make sure that we are not crossing into the level three on a scale of one to 10. I wanna keep that uh, any kind of um, discomfort at a one or a two at low level, not triggering pain. All right, so now we're gonna come up into our quadruped position, spreading fingers nice and wide, grounding palms, extending elbows without locking. And since we are working around a knee replacement with um, you know, inflammation, potential swelling. The first thing I want to do when I get in this position is assess the knee, range of motion of the knee. So all we're simply doing, I got my toes untucked, flat ankles. I am sitting back hips to heels, and I am specifically feeling into the knee joint space, seeing how far back can I bring my hips to heels, and then rocking all the way back forward. And I'm tuning in to, that, to the knees to feel in for pain, obviously, the first thing. Uh, I want to notice clicking. I want to notice uh, an incongruency of smoothness. If one knee smooth and there's the other knee a little clunky. And then the other thing is, how far back can I get hips to heels on the right side compared to the left side? Uh, I deal with knee swelling in my right knee because of five surgeries. So oftentimes when I do this, I can't get my hips all the way to my heels on this right side, especially when they're swelling, because that swelling takes up space and affects range of motion of the knee joint. So it's kind of the first thing I want to assess. Is there swelling in the knee? How much is it swelling? Is it painful? Um, and on top of swelling, we are also working to start priming the pump to help get that swelling to move out of the knee and get reabsorbed into the body. Because the last thing I want to do is just let that stuff sit. So now that we got an assessment on the knee, now we're going to tuck the toes, specifically the big toe. And we're doing the same rock back action, but now we're loading into that big toe joint of the foot. Continuing to rock back and forth with each one, seeing if you can load the hips into the heels a little deeper. In noticing for pain, pain at the big toe is going to be a big indicator. Uh, with, it's going to be a big part of what's going on at the knee. If there's swelling in the knee, it's probably going to impact big toe range of motion, so it's going to feel stiffer. And then if you have an impact in big toe range of motion, that's going to affect your uh, range, your gait mechanics, which can then put pressure on the knee and cause the knee to swell and inflame. So it can become a feed forward and a feedback loop where um, one impacts the other and then that the other impact they, they impact each other back and forth as we're going back and forth seeing if that 
big toe joint will start to soften and give you a little bit more range of motion. Then we're going to turn the heels outward so that you're loading more through the pinky side of the uh, ball of the foot and doing the exact same thing. Rocking back hips to heels and feeling that load more through the pinky side, getting into the lateral arch. Again, comparing right side to left side. And if all that's feeling okay, then we can get into our windshield wipers. Saw a little bit of sitting hips to heels, so we're a little bit loaded in the balls of the feet, and then moving the heels in and out, trying to get that pinky toe tucked all in all the way if we can, and feeling that light mobilization of the rest of the foot. Again, noticing where is their discomfort, restriction, and pain? All right, so now um, we're gonna um, bring hands forward. I wanna get into a little bit of bear position, but I wanna make sure that our shoulders are somewhat warmed up. So keeping hips over knees, hands come forward. This is where I want my nice sticky gecko hands. Downward pressure, elbows fully extended. Get a little bit of a scoop in the pelvis. Notice how my back is round, low back is rounding a little bit and then dropping sternum down towards the floor. I want to keep that scoop in order to help keep my rib cage from flaring so that I can isolate the shoulders. And I'm feeling into this armpit area, A, making sure that it is not painful, Get B, getting it some you know, synovial fluid start coating that joint and then see noticing if there's a difference in that right shoulder and left shoulder. I want to make sure there's no pain in my shoulders so that I can get into that bear crawl position without concern of hurting. And I've got a I've got some discomfort in my left shoulder. So when I get into the bear, I'm not going to get very deep into the shoulders. So now bringing hands back underneath the shoulders lifting the knees off the floor. I want to keep my knees bent and we're going to see how deep we can get chest to move towards the floor. It doesn't have to be super deep. It does not have to be a down dog position. It's similar, but it doesn't have, we're not trying to achieve that position. And now I want to alternate extending one knee as I reach the heel to the floor, feeling into that back line of the leg, bottom of the foot, calf, back of the knee, hamstring. And we're gonna gas pedal alternating. As you extend one knee, you're bending the other. Again, actively reaching the heel to the floor, actively straightening that knee. I don't wanna force it, but I'm feeling into it. Noticing if there's a difference on the right side and the left side. Now, the interesting thing with a, something like a knee surgery, if there's swelling in the knee, is you may find that the opposite leg is tighter in the calf or the hamstring. I want to note that. I want to keep that, you know, in my record of um, imbalances. But then I kind of want to come back to that painful side, especially the back of the knee. And note, do I feel anything through the arch of the foot? Do I feel it more in the calf? Do I feel it more in the back of the knee? Or do I feel it more higher up in the leg? Just kind of noting where is that tension and how does it relate to the pain in the back of the knee? Um, hopefully it's not triggering pain, but you may find that there's a deep tightness that runs parallel to the, where the site of pain tends to be. And so I want to kind of take note of that. And now we're going to get our ball out um to work on our feet i'm also going to grab a staff since we are working uh with knee replacement balance is going to be an issue so i always want to be a little bit more cautious to uh, make sure that we don't you know i want to be able to focus on the massage and not on whether i can maintain my balance so we're going to do some general work on the on the sole of the foot with the foot, I like to separate it into three sections. The first section being the first big toe. 
And that big toe is a line that goes all the way back to the heel. And we're tracing this along the bottom of the foot. So I got the big toe line from the big toe all the way to the heel. The second one is a second and third toe line. So the two second and third toes all the way back to the heel. And then the third is the fourth and fifth toes all the way back to the heel. So we got three sections of the foot. I want to get work in each of those sections, looking at going from the ball of the foot all the way to the base of the heel. So um, the way we're gonna get started on this is just placing the ball of the big toe on top of the lacrosse ball. First thing is just making sure we can get into this position that we can support it, that we're not, uh, don't have balance issues in this position, that we're not feeling like dizziness, lightheaded, any of those kind of issues. So I got the ball of the big toe. I'm gonna slowly move my foot forward so that that ball moves to just below the base of the big toe into that nice meaty muscle right at the base of the big toe. And from there, starting out, I just wanna take some nice deep breaths, allow my foot to kind of melt onto the ball. There may be some sensitivity here right off the bat. I don't want to really focus on what feels painful. I want to focus more on what feels, uh, can I feel tissue density? Can I feel um, what feels good? You know, it might be a little uncomfortable, but it still feels good. I don't want to go into pain on our massage. The rules of pain still very much apply. So as we start to feel into that melting and usually after like 30 to 60 seconds you're going to feel any of that sensitivity start to soften and like you can feel that ball get a little deeper into the musculature and the fascial tissue as you feel that melting we can continue we can now start to move a little bit following that line from the big toe all the way to the heel and I want to, you know, I, I kind of want to feel melting it at like 30 to 40% reduction in whatever density or discomfort was there as you feel that melt 30 to 40%. I want to maintain whatever gravitational pressure I have just from relaxing my foot on the ball, while at the same time start to move from the base of the big toe towards the heel. I want to see if we can kind of feel that melting action move with the ball without lifting the foot up, without jostling a whole lot. I want to just slowly move 30% reduction at a time. And this may take a minute and a half to three minutes. And as you, if you get all the way back to the base of the, to the heel, then you can start to move back up to the big toe. And this will give you some indications of a where is it most sensitive is it more sensitive by next closer to the big toe is it more sensitive closer to the heel or is it more sensitive right in the middle. And as you start to feel where it's most sensitive, you can kind of spend about 30 to 60 seconds on that spot again light pressure i'm not pushing I don't have a lot of weight on the ball but just enough that it feels good, it feels juicy, like and I'm on something um, that feels important. You can even do a little bit of like clenching the toes lightly, extending the toes, uh, especially as you're moving from one spot to the other, just to kind of, it'll help you feel where those sensitive spots are so that you can isolate your, your pressure a little bit better. And then we're gonna to move to the second and third toes. So coming back to the ball of the foot, second and third toe, then moving the foot just a little bit forward so that you can get into that nice meaty muscle just at the base of the big toe, just base of the knuckles. And again, allowing it to melt and then slowly following that line all the way to the heel and then back up to the ball of the foot. Again, taking kind of mental note of where you feel it in the foot. Uh, and it may be worth writing this down. And sometimes the, the area, especially if this is new pain that we're trying to um, figure out where it might be coming from, uh, writing down what, the, what it is that you feel on a day-to-day -day basis to see if there's anything that changes day-to-day -day or if there's kind of common 
threads of tension within the body. That can be real helpful as far as figuring out some kind of movement remedies that might improve outcomes. Again, we're slowly moving that ball further down the foot, getting closer and closer to the heel. If you make it to the heel, then you get to start moving back up. You know, and then isolating for a moment, like where is it most noticeably sensitive without ramping up our pain? And for me, it's right in the middle of the foot, right where I kind of consider the deep spring of the foot. And then we'll come to the fourth and fifth toes doing the exact same thing. So I'm on the ball, on the knuckle, slowly moving to the base of the big, those toes. Feeling that nice melting. And as it melts, slowly moving towards the heel and then back up towards the knuckles. Again, we can play with a little bit of flexion and extension of the foot of the toes. It kind of moves that the fibers of those muscles into contraction and extension, which helps you kind of isolate. You know, one, it will help the tissue melt a little bit more over the ball, and you're going to be able to isolate more specific fibers within that uh, those tissues that might be holding more tension in, in them. And then moving back up and feeling into where is that nice, um, you know, where does it feel good, juicy, sensitive, but not overly painful. I definitely don't want to be getting into that level three pain when doing any kind of massage work on the body. I got this particular area. It's closer to the knuckles of the foot. And then we're going to switch and do the same thing on the other side. So starting at the ball of the big toe, finding that nice meaty space, allowing it to melt. And then we're going to follow down up and down that line. And as we're on the ball uh, with the, you know, the ball and the foam roller, um, what I want to think about what we're doing here is I'm not trying to fix anything in the foot. Um, I want to think about all the swelling that goes that builds up in the knee. When I spend my time upright, swelling is made of pretty heavy material. If you think of like a gallon of water weighs eight pounds, like there's a lot of fluid. So there's a lot of water in that swelling. There's other, other uh, qualities to it as well, but it has weight and weight, gravity pulls down on weight. So as we walk, that gravity moves that fluid down into the ankles and into the foot, which can create swelling of the ankle and foot, which then can create other kind of uh, movement issues with, related to the lower extremities and get pain at the foot, big toe, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, all kinds of things can kind of crop up just from that extra t uh, um, pressure from swelling that moves in, that comes into the knee and the lower leg. So part of what we're doing with the foam roller and the lacrosse ball is we're helping to prime the pump. By going in and pressing, we're kind of creating tissue ischemia, like squeezing out a sponge um, and then as we relieve uh, we move the ball and that tissue opens back up it sucks all the moisture around it um, bringing in fresh fluid fresh nutrients helps to remove the waste it's kind of priming that pump gets that fluid to start moving through the body again so that we can reabsorb it um, instead of it just sitting stagnant creating problems We'll go ahead and move to that second and third toe. Again, finding that nice meaty space just at the base of the big toe and then slowly uh, letting it melt and letting following that line to the heel. Again, we can come back to kind of flexing, flexing and extending the toes a little bit just to kind of help isolate where does that pressure, that pressure feel most beneficial, most juicy without going into pain. And I also want to come back to like making our notes, our mental notes. Where are you feeling it in your foot? We've got three sections of the foot that we're looking at. And with each section, there's three sections. So there's the front of uh, the big, the ball side, middle, and then heel side. So each of those areas, there's going to be a little bit of a different um, discomfort, density, sensations. 
on the right side compared to the left side. So it's good to kind of make notes because a lot of the stuff that's going on in the foot is going to track uh, with tension patterns through the rest of the body. So we can really kind of start figuring out like where is, uh, where is your body compensating and why? And not that we necessarily want to do anything to remove those compensations, but it's just kind of having an awareness of how your body organizes movement um, can be quite helpful, especially when pain is present. We're going to go ahead and move to the fourth and fifth uh, toes and doing the exact same thing. And the real curious thing is, is one foot more sensitive just in general compared to the other? Are they both equally sensitive? Um, and if they're both equally sensitive, are they equally sensitive but in different places? Um, it's pretty rare that you're going to be e the, that you're, the right foot's going to feel identical to the left foot. Um, usually what will happen is you'll feel tension on one side of one of the of one foot and it'll be on the count the opposite side of the opposite foot. So as an example, if you got a if that base of the big toe on the right side is really, really sensitive it might be more to the outside edge on the pinky toe side on the opposite side. Uh, or if you feel it more in the forefoot on one foot, you might feel it more on the rear foot on the other foot. With my left foot, I feel it a lot more through this lateral line, pinky toe side. Um, that tends to be one of my areas of um, compensation tension um, related to my right side, which I've had mo the majority of my knee surgeries on. And again, remember nice deep breaths, continue to breathe, soften and melt. I got a good spot there, so I'm kind of getting that last little bit of melting in it and then we'll move the the ball off to the side and we're going to come down to the floor uh, grabbing our foam roller and we're going to work on our calves um, so we're only going to work calves up to the base of the knee because part of what i want to do is help to move all any of that swelling up the body so with the calves we have three sections of the calves that we also want to look at. Um, really four, I'm gonna focus, we'll, we'll see if I get to that fourth one today. Uh, so the three sections are kind of easy to, 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 to find, right? So the first one is intermediate calf. If my toes are straight up, I'm getting dead center calf. If I turn my foot about 45 degrees inward, I'm gonna get the inner calf or medial calf, and if I turn my foot 45 degrees out, I'm gonna get lateral calf. So those are our three primary sections of the calf that we're gonna spend a few minutes on on each side. Uh, I'm gonna probably keep it to like three minutes total for the purpose of the video, but it can be five minutes, it can be up to 10 minutes, as long as you do this equal amount of time on the right side as you do on the left side. Um, you probably wouldn't do more than 10 minutes. I'd say five minutes is probably a better better number to start with, especially if this is a new practice. Um, so I want to go ahead and bring this the foam roller up to about the the thickest density of the calf to start with, and I'm starting with my toes straight up. So I'm hitting that intermediate line of the calf, coming back on shoulders, just kind of making sure that I'm nice and soft. I want to just allow my foot to relax on the foam roller in gravity. I'm not pushing down. I just want to allow it to melt. I want to think about hot knife, uh, melting butter, and just allowing that butter to melt over the knife. And the first thing I'm feeling for is any kind of sensitivity, density, discomfort in the tissue. If this feels pretty good and like you need a little bit more pressure, then we can apply our other leg on top. And all I'm doing is just letting it rest. I'm not pushing down, I'm just letting gravity have it. That should be plenty of pressure to get what we need in, with the foam roller for right now. 
Um, I want to make sure that this is not painful again, not getting into our level three pain. So if this is a significant spot, then I would say take that foot off and let's move the foam roller a little lower, lower on the leg and see if you can find an area that feels less sensitive and then apply that other, other leg back on. But for right now, we're seeing if we can kind of get right into the middle of that density of that muscle. Taking nice deep breaths in and out. And as you start to feel that melt, I want to see which direction the sensitivity goes. So I can either follow that melting towards the foot or I can follow that melting up closer to the knee. So I'm going to kind of let move a little bit back and forth to see where it takes me. You might find that it's sensitive in both directions, in which case just pick one. I'm going up to start with because that's where I'm feeling it. Moving up again, I want to kind of follow that melting. So as you get a 30 to 40% reduction in any one spot, move to the next significant spot and then take some nice deep breaths, allow it to melt. And as that melts 30 to 40%, move to the next spot. If you make it all the way up to the, um, I don't want to get to the back of the knee. I don't want to hit into that soft space uh, in the back of the knee. So I'm staying on primarily on the calf muscle. So once you hit the kind of the top region of the calf muscle, then you can start moving back down towards the ankle. But again, the main thing I'm looking for here is where is a sensitive dense spot. Um, and I'm just getting some melting again. All we're doing is pressing into a sponge, squeezing out all the fluid. And then when we move off that sponge, fresh nutrients come in, help kind of flush that tissue. As we, you know, hopefully you're able to like move back down a little bit towards the ankle. Again, as we move down, we don't have to get all the way to the back to the, uh, the um, Achilles tendon or calcaneal tendon. Uh, I kind of want to just stay on the calf muscle. Once we get all the way back down, now I'm turning my foot in. So again, we're getting more on that medial line and coming back up to the meaty part of the muscle and doing the exact same thing. If you if it's too much pressure, you can take that other foot off. If you need pressure, add the foot, but then just allow the weight of gravity. Nice deep breaths in and out. And we can still play a little bit with like flexing and extending the toes or a little bit of like flexing and extending the ankle or even light inversion, eversion and even light circles of the ankle. I don't want to do a whole lot of that because it brings tension into the muscles, but it also kind of allows me to feel where do I want to place that foam roller a little bit more and then I can let the foot kind of soften and melt again. Just like with the foot, I want to take mental notes of where I feel the discomfort, especially with the calf, um, especially if we're on the side of the side with pain. So let me bring this back to, to kind of assessing uh, the knee pain, the back of the knee pain. Um, I definitely want to note where I am feeling the most sensitivity of pressure, whether it's inner, inner, intermediate or outer calf, whether it's closer to the heel or closer to the knee. Um, the close because all of that information tends to be pretty, pretty valuable. The closer it is to the knee tends to tell me that the pro like where the problem might be arising from is high. The closer it is to the heel or the foot tells me that it may be an issue related to the foot. If it's an issue related to the foot, then it's also going to be an issue related to the glute and the hips. So just because it's pointing me low doesn't mean it's not also pointing me high but it's giving me some different indicators. It's moving towards the foot, then there's probably some, some tension within the foot and the mobility of the foot that could be related. If we get that mo foot moving better, that might help the back of the knee. If it's closer to the back to the knee side, it may be something more in the hip or in the spine that's the issue. 
Um, so, you know, I want, I want to take note of where that tissue, where that tension tends to be. Now we're going to go ahead and move to that outer. So turning the foot all the way out. Again, I'm kind of more on the densest, the thickest part of that calf. Um, if it's not too painful, we're adding that other leg in order to apply a little bit more pressure. Again, as it melts, we get to move down towards the heel or move up towards the knee. And again, note whether the medial side of the calf is more sensitive, whether it's right dead center calf or if it's more on the outer calf. You know, nice deep breaths, full inhale, full exhale. Continuing to, as you feel it melt, continuing to move with that melting, following either low towards the foot, high towards the knee, on where you feel that sensitivity the most. And I'm going to see if we can hit one more area of the lower leg. So this is going to be getting all the way out to the lateral side of the leg, which means we kind of got to move and shift more onto the outside of the body. It might be coming down to an elbow and supporting ourselves with the back foot. I don't have my other leg on top of it at the moment because I want to make sure I can get into this position comfortably. If you can't get into this position comfortably, um, then I would say let's avoid this area for right now. I want to make sure that you can support the position you're getting into. If you can get here, if this feels comfortable, safe, you can use bolsters for the upper body here as well. It doesn't have to be all be on the shoulders. From here, I'm on the app outside of my knee. My foot is par uh, parallel with the floor. My knee is moving parallel with the floor. I can bend the knee to kind of move down towards the ankle or extend it to move up closer to the knee. If this feels um, okay, and you're able to support moving your other leg on top, you can add a little bit of pressure by just placing that leg. And again, seeing if there's a spot where it feels dense and sensitive. It may not feel like much. Um, it's not uncommon for you to not feel anything, especially if this is the first time getting into this area. But if you've ever had ankle sprains, ankle rolls, this area might light up like a Christmas tree, and so I want to be really soft and sensitive on it, especially the closer to the ankle joint that we get. And we'll just do a little bit of light work here. It doesn't need to be super heavy. Uh, for ankle sprains, ankle injuries, I probably want to spend a little bit more time on this area because this is a primary area that we want to get some flushing of that um, musculature uh, to get it uh, moving well again. Again, see if you can feel melt at 30 to 40% reduction. Um, if there's not discomfort, you're just looking for a 30 to 40% reduction as far as a melting reduction. Like uh, you think about ice melting or butter melting. Like, can you just feel that soft, um, that the foam roller getting a little bit deeper into the tissue uh, without you needing to do any work. So let's go ahead and switch feet and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Starting out middle of that calf muscle, foot is straight up. Making sure that the position is supported. Nice deep breath in and out. Feel that melting if you need. You can apply that other leg, making sure it's not painful. 
And as you feel that melting, we're either going to travel up or down depending on which direction it tells you to go. This is a little bit of like tuning into the body. Can you feel that pressure? If you start moving towards the heel, does it ramp up or does it ramp up if you move more towards the knee? Or does it feel pretty good on this side? If it feels good, just kind of follow that melting wherever, you know, up and down, and then we'll move to the next spot. I just hit a good spot, getting a little lower to my foot, and I feel it more on that lateral calf, which is congruent with the tension that I was feeling on the lateral part of the arch of my, or bottom of my foot. Get nice deep breaths, continue to melt. As it gets a 30 to 40% reduction, you're move, continuing to move, but maintaining that pressure. Again, taking notes of where you feel it more on this side. I'm feeling this one dead center of calf now. I got a good spot here. Nice deep breaths. Get a little bit more melting on this one. And then we're going to turn the foot towards in the medial calf, turning that foot inward. And then as you feel that melting, moving either up towards the knee or down towards the ankle. The big thing here with the foam roller is I want to avoid any kind of like major jostling. Notice how we're not lifting the hips up. We're not rolling back and forth. Um, I don't like that. It's hard to get that tissue melting with that much tension in my body. And when I move so quickly, I'm kind of strumming the nervous system and, and stimulating the nervous system. Uh, and generally, if you stimulate the nervous system, you're going to get a protective response. And that's the opposite response I want when I'm doing any kind of tissue work. I want melting, I want relaxing, I want safe. I want the body to ease and not tighten. So jostling around on the foam roller tends to not give us the results that we're seeking and in fact can actually make some things worse. So I want to be in that nice slow melting place, which is part of the reason we can spend a little bit more time on the roller because all I'm doing is applying light pressure. I'm not digging into this muscle. I'm not, I'm trying to avoid bruising. If you bruise easily, then I want to keep the time of, of pressure low, at least the, for the first time. It's not uncommon to get a little bit of bruising if this is the first time you've ever used a foam roller. Um, but I don't, I, I definitely want to avoid that if I can. Light bruising the first time is not a huge deal. If you bruise every time, then it's probably worth having a conversation about. And then we'll move to that outside calf, turning the foot out, again, coming back to kind of that meaty, dense part of the calf. If you can, adding that other leg. And again, noting like, how is this side different? How is it different from the other side? And as you feel that melting, moving either further towards the heel or back up towards the knee. And one of the interesting things with density and sensitivity, especially if this, if you're new to the foam roller is um, it's hard to melt, especially if there's pain in that, in where you're pressing and you may not feel the pain. The pain may be locked up underneath some of that density of tissue that your body is so protective that it's going to tighten up all those muscles and it won't allow that foam roller to press in deeper where it is more sensitive. 
which is why I want to go slow and allow a little bit of melting. You may notice that after 30, 60, 90 seconds of soft pressure, an area that didn't feel like it had any kind of sensitivity or discomfort to it, all of a sudden there's like, oh, I, that's actually kind of painful underneath there. Like you're able to get into a little deeper layer. Um, I want to be soft with that, but that's not uncommon, especially on this outer part of the, of the calf. Again, moving towards the heel, moving up towards the knee, wherever you feel that pressure needs to go. And then the last uh, spot we're gonna get to is, can we get to this side body position on elbow, hand elbow, or with bolster. Supported with the back leg if needed. If you're able to, we can add that other leg just to be gravity on top. And simply by bending, pulling the knee up towards the chest or reaching that foot away, we can move up and down the, uh, up and down that sh the shin and kind of noting where is it most um, dense or sensitive. Again, it may not, you may not feel a whole lot right here and that's okay. This side's a little bit sensitive. It's not terribly, but it's more so than it was on the right side. And it's definitely, I can feel it down into that pinky toe region. So this part of the reason I want to take notes is where you feel it, whether it's medi the medial side, intermediate or lateral side, will trace up the body. And that can tell us a lot of things about where tension patterns are moving through the body, um, especially related to painful movement. It'd be super helpful. Why, why do you not do the back of the knee? The back of the knee, uh, we consider that an endangerment site. That's where nerves, vasculature veins it's soft there's not all the muscles are attaching deep so anything that you're getting and pressing into is going to it's more superficial is going to be vasculature and nerves so it's it's endangerment you could potentially harm and it's not actually reaching any of the any of the structures that we want to get any kind of significant change in so we're going to go ahead and set the staff off to the side uh, and we're going to come back into our quadruped. Um, and I want to reassess the knee now, uh, especially the swelling of the knee. So since we got a little bit of work, part of the reason I want to reassess is I want to get a little flushing of the knee. So we're coming right back to just exhale as we soften hips to heels. Inhale as we come forward. I want to note, is it smoother? Is it less clunky or is it more clunky? Um, sometimes getting on the foam roller actually makes things worse. I want, to, I want to be open to that as a possibility. It's rare, but I definitely want to pay attention to it. You may notice that you're able to get a little deeper hips to heels. If so, you're allowed to kind of sit back into it as you move forward and backwards. Again, just simply this action of moving back and forth. This is kind of helping prime that pump. So we just got all this stuff moving. Now we're trying to help influence it moving back up to the heart to get reabsorbed. And then we can go ahead and tuck the toes. And I want to come back to exploring toe foot mobility, softening hips to heels and noting are you able to get more mobility, especially at the big toe joint? Do the arches of the feet feel more pliable, more mobile? Are you able to get more range of motion? And we can let the heels turn out, tucking underneath the pinky toe side, doing the same thing. Nice, soft, rocking back hips to heels. And then we're gonna do windshield wipers. Letting the heels roll in and all the way out. Now, we may have greater access to range of motion because we just used the foam roller and the lacrosse ball. 
but I want to make sure that we are sensitive to pain. Just because we have more range of motion doesn't mean that we want to go forcefully into that new range of motion. I want to stay very soft, um, softly exploring it to make, part of what I want to do is make my nervous system feel safe with this movement. So if I go in too far, I might actually initiate more pain. So the rules of pain, really, really important to pay attention to, especially as we get back to our movement after using the foam roller. So next we're gonna let the knees come up off the floor and we're going into our bear crawl position again. So dropping chest towards the floor and then actively reaching uh, the heel to the floor as we actively straighten the knee and alternating from one side to the other. Again, this is working to prime the pump. We're working to flush out all that stuff through that back line of the leg. As we're going from left to right, notice, is there a difference in where you are feeling tightness and tension the first time? Has it improved? Um, maybe you're noticing a more focused tension, a, a area of tension. Maybe you got enough relief from broad tension that you can feel the more significant, little deeper layer of tension. Where is that tension? Is it closer to the knee? Is it closer to the foot? Is it on the foot? We'll let our knees back down to the floor. And now we're gonna get on to our back. So laying on back, bringing arms out to the side, palms are up. Bending the knees, lifting the feet off the floor. I want the hips to be a little less than 90 degrees. Knees are right around 90 degrees. And we're just going to slowly explore rotation of the hips. This is where I want to imagine that our upper body is on a bed of sand and I want to have a nice imprint of fingers, wrists, elbow, shoulders, all the upper back. And I don't want to smear that imprint at all. We're going to slowly let the hips rotate left and right going small at first, because again, I wanna make sure that this is not painful on the low back. And we can start letting it move more and more, making, ensuring that we're not moving into pain and that we're not smearing our sand. I don't want my shoulder to start moving and sliding on the floor. I definitely don't want it to lift up, but I don't even want it to slightly shift. I wanna keep perfect placement of my entire upper body on the floor as I slowly start to explore further and further into hip rotation. And as we're doing this, notice if it's harder to do this to the right side than it is to the left. As you go left versus right, does the shoulder want to lift off the floor more in one direction? Is it harder to maintain that perfect imprint does one side of the low back or hips feel tighter and more restricted than the other? Notice the imbalances. Again, this is looking for patterns that are gonna be related to what we're going on in the foot and the calf. If there's, especially if there was something that was going on more to the right side or the left side, comparatively, it's going to show up and present in the low back area. And go ahead and let our feet back down to the floor. Legs are gonna go straight and you're just gonna bend one leg with that foot coming up flat to the floor. And then we're gonna move that foot out 45 degrees from the midline of the body. So foot comes up flat, moving it out 45 degrees. And I wanna maintain a nice tripod foot, which means I want to keep that knee from turning in or out. If the knee rotates in, it's going to pink, pick the pinky toe off the floor. If it rotates out, it's going to pick the big toe off the floor. So I want to make sure that that knee is straight over the heel. And we're going to start to drive that knee down into the floor, feeling that hip get lifted up towards the ceiling and then back down. And with each one, as we drive, I'm seeing if I can move that hip bone higher 
I'm not lifting my opposite leg. My opposite leg is actually completely soft and relaxed in gravity. So if you feel both hips wanting to lift up off the ground, it means you're pushing through that opposite heel. Let that leg go. We're only pushing one side. One hip is rolling over the other hip. I want to feel into this stretch in the front of the hip. With each one, you're pressing that even higher and notice if you can start to feel some contraction in your glute. Can you feel that glute getting tighter? I want to move into that tighter, that tension even more by pressing down. How much can you feel that activation of the glute moving into that stretch of the front of the hip? And then I'm pressing through my right foot. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to reach across my body. I'm still driving down through that foot as I reach across through the chest. So as I drive down, hip goes up to extension and then I'm reaching across. I'm seeing how far can I reach my fingertips while maintaining my tripod still pressing down into the floor. Inhale as I'm bringing it all back to center. Exhale as I drive knee into the floor and reach across the body. Then we're going to switch and do the same thing on the other side. Foot comes flat to the floor, out to 45 degrees driving that hip, that knee down so that the hip gets lifted and then letting it soften. Exhale as we press and feel, does this side feel tighter in the front of the hip or does it feel easier? Are you able to get more range? My left hip feels tighter. As you're pressing up, can you start to feel that glute contract? The tighter the front of the hip feels, the harder it's going to be to get into that glute. Which is part of the reason I want to work on pressing up into it more and more on each one. And you start to get more of that contraction in the glute. And then we're going to add to this. As you drive that hip up, reaching across the body, keeping that pressure through the foot. Inhale, coming all the way back to center. Exhale, extend that hip and reach across. Notice if this, how different does this side feel compared to the other side? Movements that feel significantly different from one side to the other are movements that I want to practice every day because the more I practice, the more balance I can bring back to those back into those movements. All right, now we're going to get into our V sit position, pulling the dorsum of the foot back towards the shins. And I'm kind of imagining that my heels are moving away, reaching across the floor. Hands come to the floor, palms kind of pressing down, opening up the chest and spiraling elbow pits out, feeling that nice spread of the chest. And from here, we're going to do our windshield wipers with our knees, letting the knees roll all the way out and then turning them all the way in. I want to feel that movement deep in the hip socket. And this is a great one to compare. How does this one feel on the right side compared to the left side? If you watch your knees, do your knees go as far inward and outward? Are they equal or does one side travel a little bit more in one direction than the other does? I want to actively reach the knees down to the floor as you're pulling the, the dorsum of the foot up towards the shin. And then we can turn this into ankle circles as you rotate outward then you can point those toes as you bring it all the way inward. Making a nice smooth circle at the ankles. And you can even start to 
uh, pull the toes and splay them out as wide as you can as you pull your toes back. And if this is comfortable, you can even flex and grip the toes as you reach away. You might, that sometimes leads to a little bit of like spasm Charlie horse in the arch of the foot. So I want to, I don't want to go into that too deep, especially if you're prone to that. But I do want to be able to get these movements back without having that action. That action usually tells me something about how the body is compensating and where the tension patterns are. And that that is an area that's holding more tension than it needs to if it's going into that level of spasm just from getting activated in this movement. And it's reverse directions, making sure we go both directions with our spirals. Areas that we can kind of pay attention to on this movement. Noticing hips, quality of movement on the right side to the left side. Um, noticing how does it feel as you spiral through the ankles? Are you getting more tension in the ankles on one side than you do on the other, especially as you move through certain points of the range of motion? And then the last part is toes in that arch. As you point and flex, does one foot want to kind of go into that spasm feel more so than the other? Or are they both doing it equally? We'll go ahead and let the legs relax. Now we're going to come into our shin box. We've got a couple more movements to go through and then we'll kind of be, we'll, we'll uh, be done with this part of our movement work. So from shin box, I want to place outside hand flat to the floor, spiral elbow opening up chest. This is where I want that knee is the pivot point, pushing through that knee in order to move that hip bone forward. I want to feel that stretch through the front of the hip. Similar to what we just did in that hip, that supine hip reach, where we were driving the knee down. Can you feel that stretch through the front of the hip? Can you start to feel that glute contract? If you can, I want to reach into it. I want to, I want to feel into that contracting glute. I want to see if I can extend more and contract that glute even more on each one. Going back and forth. And then we're going to shin box through to the other side and do the same thing. Again, using that back knee as the pivot point, palm down, spiraled elbow, open chest, reaching that hip bone forward and then letting it soften. Exhale as you reach, inhale as you let it soften. Is this side tighter or uh, looser than the other side? Are you able to get as far? Can you feel that glute contract? Again, my left hip right here is tighter. It's harder to get into that glute contraction. I can get it, but it's harder. I have less range of motion on this left hip. Again, compensating for my right knee. When you got a loose knee, you got to hold tension somewhere. And we're going to spiral. We're going to move back to the other side. And our last movement flow is just going to be going into our kind of modified pigeon to pigeon. Nice folds reaching towards the knee. Exhale as you reach, feeling into that glute space on the leg. As we inhale, bringing it all the way back and across to the other side, doing the same thing. Exhale as you reach. As you're going side to side, Start to compare, how does this feel on the right side compared to the left side? Do you get more of a stretch through the glutes? Do you feel more tension in the low back? Do you feel um, more tension in this back hip, especially in the front of the hip or in the adductor space? As we're going back and forth, we can start to work on opening up that back knee a little bit, just changing that hip position as we fold, which will elicit a little bit more feedback. Again, these are areas where it might be helpful to kind of take notes for a while in order to start to kind of make connections. It's almost like doing a uh, connect the dot puzzle.
And hopefully as you're going side to side, again, nice focus on inhale and exhale with each movement, making sure we're not forcing it, we're not moving into pain. And hopefully you're feeling that your hips are starting to soften and open up a little bit more, getting more mobile, feeling looser, feeling juicier, and not painful. We get our last round going back and forth, getting closer to that kind of more classic yoga pigeon pose, if possible. I don't want to be too focused on the end range pose. At least not right now. The main thing right now that we are working on is getting flow through the body. And the last thing we're doing is going to lay down on our back and I want to come back and focus on breath with our baby rolls that we started with. So nice breathing into the belly, full inhale, exhale, drawing navel into spine. Arms are coming up into a Y. Again, taking a nice three to five breaths first. And then on the inhale, as you exhale, slot, soft, slow reach. Again, keep it short and small to start with. The spine should be well lubricated and warmed up at this point, but even so, I kind of want to get into it easy. And with each one, we're seeing if we can get a little longer. Can we reach the fingertips a little further away from the toe tips. Can we start to reach the toe tips a little bit further away from the fingertips? This is a good place to come back and reassess if you can remember how the baby rolls felt at the beginning of the session. Now, what will be interesting is you may find that you have more range of motion available. You also may find that you feel more tension than you did the first time. And some of that's because as you get more mobility, you're going to create more stretch in the places that you weren't able to get stretched to begin with. So you're going to feel more areas of stretchy tension where it's like, oh, that feels tight. That's good information at this point. So just because it feels like you're getting, like it feels maybe feels tighter because you're getting a bigger stretch, that might be an indication that you actually have more mobility and it gives us some deeper insight into the patterns going on in the body. So we're going to do the same thing, reaching through the leg, reaching across the body, keeping that foot high, nice, short, small movement to start with. Inhale as you come to center. Exhale as you reach. Each one. We're seeing if we can get a little longer. Can you get your toe tips to reach a little further away from your fingertips? And then can you start counter reaching to get your fingertips to reach a little further away from your toe tips? And where do you feel it? Where does it speak to you the most? And where is it different on the right side compared to the left side? And then we'll let our legs come back to the floor, kind of reset, and we'll take another two or three nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. And go ahead and close your eyes. Breathing into that space, again, that crocodile breath, that 360 degrees of expansion, belly, side body, and low back. On your inhale, breathing into tension. On that exhale, letting any tension just melt into the floor. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes and slowly roll over to your side to ease and get back up making sure that we're not moving into pain. <sighs>